Hello everybody and welcome to the third video in our series of videos on peace and war in Europe between 1920 and 1945. Today we are going to be looking at the Russian Revolution. In particular, we're going to be looking at um, Russia from Lenin to Stalin. As always, we begin with our learning outcomes. So by the end of this presentation, you guys should know two terror tactics that were used by Stalin to uh, keep control of uh, power in Russia or the Soviet Union. You guys should know who the gulags were and what happened to them. And finally, you guys should be able to know these three uh, terms, communism, propaganda, and collectivization. So remember from when we looked briefly at World War I that Russia had a communist revolution in October 1917. Uh, communism is this political movement which aims to create an equal society where all property is owned by workers and peasants. Russia had had a revolution in February of 1917, but they had made the severe mistake of staying in World War I. When Lenin uh, and the Communist Party took power in 1917, they made sure that they got straight out of World War I. And like I said, Lenin was the leader of this revolution. The name of his party was the Bolsheviks, and they changed the name of the country from Russia to the USSR or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Like I said, Lenin took the USSR out of World War I at all costs. They signed a humiliating treaty known as the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk with the Germans, um, where they lost a lot of land, a lot of money. But Lenin saw that it was crucial that for there to be a communist revolution within the country, they needed peace first. Um, in 1918, Lenin had the Tsar, Tsar Nicholas II, and the royal family executed. Um, and after Lenin took power, a civil war broke out in the USSR. And this is between Lenin's Red Army uh, as opposed to the White Army. Um, so the White Army were more... Uh, not as hardline socialists. So these are people who want the social reform, but not necessarily the extremes that the Bolsheviks were willing to go to. The White Army were known as the Mensheviks, and they were a collection of different people with different political ideals, whereas the Red Army were people who believed in the Bolshevik message. Even though the White Army were larger, they were more popular and had support from countries such as Britain and the US, the Bolshevik Red Army won. Uh, like I said, the White Army was associated just with anti-communism, loyal Tsarists, an anti-Lenin form of, of socialism as well. In, however, in uh, 1921, the Civil War ended with the Reds and Lenin victorious. In 1924, uh, Vladimir Lenin died, uh, and after a power struggle um, between the four uh, probably um, most worthy candidates uh, for the power, Stalin uh, took over. He introduced these five plans to try to modernize the Soviet Union. He built great factories and building projects were made and communism seemed to be really, really working. But all of this was not what it seemed. There was a massive amount of propaganda coming out of the Soviet Union. And propaganda, just to give a definition, is the use of posters, film, or radio, and newspapers, or media of any sort, to present news and information that portrays an event or person in a particular way for political purposes. Stalin invited people to see the great works that the Soviet Union were doing, but he hid all the horrors from the visitors. He controlled the media and news that was distributed within the country. And also he had members of communist parties in other European countries uh, spread this propaganda about how great things were going in the communist Soviet Union to try to spread uh, the communist re uh, revolution worldwide. The reality of life within Soviet Russia something a lot more darker and, and, and disturbing. Stalin really, he controlled his people through terror on the scale that had really never ever been seen before uh, in, in history. Uh, he used his secret police known as the NKVD and these could arrest anyone at any time for anything. This is the badge of the NKVD. So 
uh, these were the sec secret police and they Russia had always had a uh, secret police back as far as uh, uh, Catherine the Great um, but the NKVD uh, were a particularly brutal secret police force another tactic that was used was the gulag so the gulag these were um prison camps um that uh, up in siberia uh, so the people who opposed stalin they were executed or they were sent to these prison camps these gulags and millions and millions died in these gulags we can't even uh, we don't even know an exact uh, estimate on how many people died the conditions were horrible um, a day in the life of uh, Ivan Denisovich is a novel uh, by uh, Alexander Sultan Hitson that shows the horror of these gulag uh, camps. He was someone who was in prison there um, and he described what life was like there. Um, he also, I mean, like, he also created a man made famine in Ukraine to stop the people in Ukraine opposing him. So in the Ukraine, it's estimated that five to six million people died because of this policy. So we've looked at the famine in Ireland already, and we looked at the devastation of that of a million people dying and a further two million emigrating. But five to six million people died by a famine created by Stalin, who took the food from the country um, and to try to get control over these people as you can see here from the map the ukraine is the green map is the green colored country there uh, and they were trying to get away from the the communist uh, party and stalin crushed them with his his man-made um famine the next thing we're going to look at is collectivization so this was a policy that the soviet union had um adopted it was part of Stalin's first five-year plan, and collectivization is the grouping together of all the local land into one big farm, with the idea that all the profits are shared, like in a cooperative. Um, while this is a, a fantastic idea, it would appear at first sight, there are some negative consequences, such as people who are now tied to the land. Uh, serfdom had been a massive problem in uh, Russia, and now people were tied to these uh, collectivized farms. Another big thing is where this land came from. In order to get this land, an entire class of farmer called the gulags were exterminated. So these were the wealthy class of farmers. This meant that they were wealthier than the standard peasant farmers. And the, the policy towards the gulags was to exterminate them. And it's estimated that 5 million people of these wealthier farmers it didn't matter anything about your allegiance, it didn't matter anything like that. If you were within this um, group of people, you were to be either uh, exiled to a gulag or you were um, executed. Um, and your land was taken and then it was redistributed among the community. Um, as you can see, there was massive uh, propaganda campaign against the gulags, against them as fat cats. Uh, and trying to really um, uh, promote violence against them. Another um, thing that Stalin did that really showed um, his uh, paranoia was he had this thing that we know as the Great Purge. So Stalin had hundreds of thousands of members of the Communist Party shot. He didn't want any challenge to his power anyone he saw as being even slightly suspicious of not being 100 percent loyal to him he would have them shot he if they were challenging to his power if they were coming up with ideas or anything like that that might give them popularity he would stage these elaborate show trials where he would have the prominent members of his party admit to these committing these outlandish crimes and they would come out and say all these things because their family would be threatened or they would have been tortured uh, and and then they would be killed for their um, disloyalty to the communist revolution. With this great purge, not only were political leaders taken out, also a lot of the leading generals in the army were killed during this purge as well. This is going to be a big problem when Russia and, or the Soviet Union finally comes in to World War Two. That a lot of the senior people who would have been in charge of the army um, were not there and really russia or the soviet union ends up 
pain with the lives of its soldiers until they can finally get uh, some kind of coherent plan in place. So Stalin's legacy, um, it's unclear exactly how many people were killed on Stalin's orders, but it is estimated that he killed around 20 million of his own people, which is just an enormous number that is uh, hard to fathom. But just that reign of terror that Stalin used to keep himself in power, um, that's Stalin's real true legacy. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So by the end of this presentation, you guys should now look to the terror tactics used by Stalin, whether it was sending people to the gulags using the NKVD, or whether it was creating man-made famines or show trials. You guys should know who the gulags were and what happened to them. So again, these were the wealthier farmers who were exterminated, five million of them, and the land was taken for the collectivization process. And then you guys should know what communism is, you guys should know what propaganda is, Finally, you guys know what collective relations. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something good from this video.